Hey guys, so today I want to talk about composting. This is a topic that mystifies a lot of people, but I think where people get into trouble is that <clears throat> you can see there's a little bit of food scraps here, like some avocado and banana peels, orange peel, coffee ground. We throw eggshells and stuff in there too. But I think a lot of people, because their main waste stream is kitchen scraps, think that they can just make a big pile of every plant-based material that comes out of their kitchen and that's going to work. Um, obviously that's too high in nitrogen, it gets stinky, it attracts animals. So what you want to do, I don't worry too much about browns versus greens, carbon, nitrogen per se, but you definitely want a big buffer of material that's not food waste. So you can see we just got into the mowing season, I've got um, a few mulching bags of grass off the lawn, which is free material. Usually I just mulch the grass in place on the lawn, but I don't mind borrowing a little bit of organic matter from it to get the pile started. Um, and then we're keeping chickens, so this is chicken bedding that's been pooped in. Um, and there's some spent grain and stuff in there as well. So what I'm going to try to do is, whenever I add food scraps, which I do maybe a couple times a week, just mow a bag of mulch and throw that on top. Grass clippings are good because they get hot really fast. Um, and it just acts as a little bit of a buffer, not that a skunk or something is not going to come over and dig through this, but I think it makes it a little bit less appealing, and once this pile gets going, it's going to get hot pretty quickly, especially once you get to about a cubic yard is what I've read, and that lines up with my experience. Once you get about a yard by a yard by a yard of material, which is probably a few times more than what we've got right here, even though this is already a fair amount, um, that's when things really heat up and you get that quick breakdown. So yeah, you do have to turn it, but I think people get hung up on like how often they have to turn it. Honestly, the biggest factor is if you get a large pile, like you can't go, if you go too small, you're gonna have problems, it's gonna take forever. So get the pile big enough, make sure you keep it damp because it does get hot enough that it will start fires. So if you're throwing dry pine shavings out of the chicken coop on here and the rest of the pile is hot and wet and cranking in the middle of the summer, you could potentially have a fire. So bear that in mind. They say like the consistency of a damp sponge um, and get it big enough. And then where the turning comes in, honestly, I find that if you get a big pile, everything in like the, the center two thirds of that, if you really get it cooking, is gonna break down fairly quickly. Then once the pile shrinks down to a certain point, that bacterial activity is gonna slow down and your pile's not gonna be like 150, 180 degrees anymore. That's when you need to turn it build it back up, um, and then at some point at the end, uh, you may want to stop adding material, give it time to finish, turn it, let it really settle into finished material. Um, if you've got big chunks of food scraps, or you can still make out what's grass, what was bedding, it's probably not done long enough. You might still be able to use that in the fall um, if you live in a seasonal climate like us, and it's got a few months to settle into the soil and everything. Um, but honestly, we, this is next year's compost. Our growing season's short, so by August, September, it's too late to start any fall crops for the most part. I'm gonna experiment a bit. Um, but basically, I'm gonna dump this stuff on the garden in November, give it time to mix with the existing soil, um, and then that'll get us a good start for next year's gardening. Hope this was helpful. Check out the channel, like, and subscribe.